Good evening, I'm Brick Clennett in Hong Kong and welcome to VIEW TV News coming up on tonight's show. LegCo subcommittee gives green light to build a mega sports park at Kai Tak, but it was a close call. Three men suspected of killing war game hobbyist Bosco Kwok appear in court. South Korea's president shocked after learning he'd been kept in the dark over the rollout of more hard anti-missile systems. Well, a controversial sports park will be built at Kai Tak after the proposal passed by a razor-thin margin. The project's funding will run into the billions of dollars and now needs approval of the Finance Committee. It took 12 hours of debate before LegCo passed the plans, 18 votes to 17. One of the most contentious parts of this development is a cashback scheme for failed tenders. The government plans to offer $60, $60 million or 50% of their tender cost if their bid is unsuccessful. Officials brushed aside lawmaker suggestions the incentives only be offered if there aren't enough bidders in the first round. Those who are interested in bidding will wait until the second round because they know there will be an incentive then. This will only waste time and will cause the project cost to go up. The trio suspected of killing war game hobbyist Bosco Kwok appeared in court today, but they didn't testify. Prosecutors say 21-year-old Chao Ching Yin and 27-year-old Yim Yu Hang already admitted to police they'd attacked Kwok. The other suspect, Wong Long Ki, said he lured Kwok's friend away from the group, allowing Chao and Yim to carry out the attack. The prosecution is now planning to summon a friend of the victim and another witness. Police say the suspects may have told another person about the assault. Salt. The case has been adjourned until next Monday. Meantime, police located the suspect who placed a fake bomb in Shimcha Choi yesterday. The incident prompted a scare among shoppers before they were evacuated from the area. Surveillance camera footage posted online showed a woman dropping off a package at the cruise terminal outside Harbour City. Sources say the woman has been hospitalised and the police are waiting for her to recover before making an arrest. News elsewhere next, and a bombshell announcement from the South Korean president's office today. It revealed the country's defense ministry intentionally avoided updating President Moon Jae-in's top aides that four more launches had been deployed for the U.S. TARD anti-missile system. Blue House spokesman Yoon Young Chan said an earlier version of a report to the office had specified the total number of launches being prepared for deployment. But the detail was removed in the final version. This comes hours after Moon ordered a probe into the matter. The Pentagon, meanwhile, said it had been very transparent with South Korea's government. The president's expressed a shock about how the defense ministry purposefully failed to report such facts when we have big events such as the summits with the United States coming up soon. Meantime, the United States successfully carried out its first ever missile defense test involving a simulated attack by an intercontinental ballistic missile. This in response to growing threats from North Korea. The Missile Defense Agency is hailing it as an incredible accomplishment given how complicated it actually was. An ICBM type missile was fired from the Marshall Islands and then another from California trying to mimic a real attack. The defense system's track record has left a lot to be desired having only hit nine of its 17 test targets since 1999. Well, the U.S. and China are continuing to cooperate over controlling North Korea. This includes discussions over implementing fresh U.N. sanctions on Pyongyang. Dan Epstein with more on that from Beijing. Well, America seems increasingly confident in China's ability to work with North Korea and uh, the U.S. ambassador to the U.N., Nikki Haley, said that China's using back-channel networking to try and make these uh, negotiations happen. But so far, they haven't been too successful. In fact, North Korea has increased the frequency of its missile tests. There's been three in the last three weeks alone. Um, but China is best su suited to try and make this happen. They account for 90% of North Korea's trade. And this is why America's approach is to try and put pressure on China to put pressure on North Korea. Um, so together with China, they're working on a new UN Security Council resolution regarding uh, North Korea. But there is one issue of contention, that is that America wants to see increased sanctions, whereas China wants to see increased dialogue and negotiation. 
Dan Epstein for us there in Beijing. Now, a powerful car bomb exploded in the center of Afghanistan's capital, killing or wounding dozens of people and sending clouds of black smoke into the sky above the presidential palace and foreign embassies. Scarlett Svitanovich reports. <laughs> A huge explosion in Afghanistan's capital, Kabul. The powerful car bomb sending black smoke billowing into the sky above the presidential palace and foreign embassies. Initial reports claiming scores of people are dead and hundreds injured. Amongst the scenes of chaos, the wounded were piled into vehicles and raced to the city's hospitals. A Kabul police spokesman says the blast was centred near the German embassy. But the exact target isn't clear. The explosion shattered windows and blew doors off their hinges in buildings hundreds of metres away. There was no immediate claim of responsibility for the bomb. However, violence has been rising in Afghanistan throughout the year. The Taliban pushing to defeat the US-backed government and reimpose Islamic law. Coming up next, the latest from the world of business with Joel Larby. Good evening. Well, what started out strong turned into a pretty flat day for Hong Kong stocks. The Hang Seng Index finishing down 0.16% to 25,660. But May marks a fifth straight month of gains for the territory share market, thanks largely to steady flows of money from the mainland. Consumer goods shares were the pick of the bunch today, while tech giant Lenovo added more than 5% as investors warmed to a new strategy for its mobile arm. Now, bad news if you're looking to buy a home here in Hong Kong. New figures showing property prices rose for the 13th straight month. That sets a new record in April. Now, that month, buyers were forking out an extra 2.1%, and that number is even higher for smaller places. Prices for apartments under 400 square feet increased 2.6%. But these numbers don't take into account the government's latest efforts to tighten mortgage lending standards. In a promising sign for China's economy, the manufacturing and services sector is growing faster than expected. May's Purchasing Managers Index stands at 54.5 compared with 54 in April. Now, anything over the 50-point mark shows growth. This is a particularly important survey because the services sector accounts for more than half of China's economy. Beijing is trying to move away from its heavy reliance on exports and investment by fanning growth in services and consumption. British Airways is facing pressure from the highest office in the country to compensate passengers stranded because of its IT glitch. Prime Minister Theresa May says the flagship carrier has a reputation to uphold and needs to look after customers who were disrupted. BA was forced to cancel flights at Heathrow and Gatwick on Saturday after a power surge knocked out its computer systems, grounding hundreds of flights. A days-long strike has left Paris drivers with empty tanks as fuel shortages grip the French capital. More than 40 petrol stations have run dry after transporters walked off the job last week over a pay dispute. Some are now setting up blockades at fuel depots. For now, we're told the situation is under control, but there are concerns panic buying could spark a widespread shortage. Now, it seems shoppers are working up an appetite again for luxury goods. A new study is forecasting global spending on expensive items to grow by as much as 4% this year, and much of that is being driven by Asia. Natalie Cantaras diaz reports. After a slump due to terror fears in Europe, global sales of luxury goods are on the up. They're expected to rise 2 to 4% this year, according to Bain Consultancy. That's thanks to Europe, where sales are up 7 to 9%. Greater spending in Europe and China on items like watches, jewellery, clothes and shoes is making up for weakness in the US and Southeast Asia. Europe is uh, definitely the champion of this uh, renewed growth. Uh, it seems that the impact of terrorism has uh, faded a little bit. Uh, tourists are back. Spain is taking advantage of this uh, the most. Uh, but also the post-Brexit UK, thanks to the devaluation of the pound, is also taking advantage of that. Now, everywhere, the local consumers are also regaining confidence, and you see that in the, in the sales of luxury brands. Growth recovery in mainland China has also boosted the luxury industry. 
Many high-end Paris stores have launched services catering specifically to Asian tourists. At present, Chinese buyers represent a quarter of luxury consumption, and that could rise to 35% within eight years. There will be more appetite uh, for luxury products everywhere in the world, so we're really, really very positive. Now, this being said, brands will have to double down uh, to make sure that they are amongst the winners in their industry. We believe that there will be more and more polarization between the winners and the, and the losers in this, uh, in this market. Global luxury brands also remain popular with the so-called millennials. This young market is set to make up nearly half of overall consumption by 2025. You see, that's interesting, Brit. Millennials making up half the global luxury brand market and yet many of them complain they can't afford a home. I or, wonder why. Or their expensive uh, smashed avocado on toast, if you remember. <laughs> exactly. Thanks very much, Joel. Don't go away. We've got plenty more coming after the break. <laughs> Including this fierce...